So um, here's the outline. Um, we're really talking about, in some ways, leaders in the art, science, policy, practice of multiculturalism. And you saw from Colleen's slides that uh, Canada is a leader. But its indigenous psychology system is quite distinct uh, from New Zealand's, but share certain overlaps as well. So we'll talk about uh, multicultural policy. You saw as well earlier, um, in terms of multicultural policy, it's Australia and New Zealand that lead the world. Uh, and then we'll talk about uh, Canadian media analysis and how does the Canadian model work compared to how does the New Zealand model work. So in the New Zealand model, there's a set of principles, and then when we get down to the nuts and bolts, we usually have to have a bun fight. That's the way the New Zealand model works. Let's see how the um, um, Canadian um, model works. And then we'll talk about the, uh, whether there's mutual learnings possible from Canada to New Zealand and New Zealand to Canada. Give you a little bit of background context. 60% um, of, of Canadians speak English as a first language, and then 23% speak French. So there is an element of biculturalism uh, in Canada in which it had two founding colonial groups, both the English and the French. And as usually happened, the English beat up the French. And so anyway, the nation became English speaking. The Quebecois still not entirely satisfied with that outcome. But then you have 17% who speak their, uh, a third language as their mother tongue. So it's a high immigration society, just as New Zealand and Australia. 4% uh, of the population is Aboriginal. That is First Nations, American Indians. Uh, and 16% is a visible uh, minority. So you have a lot of migration from Europe and as well. You can't tell the difference between French Canadians and Anglo uh, Canadians. Um, you saw the stats on that. Now, multiculturalism was the product of quite an amazing intervention by a statesman in Canada named Pierre Trudeau. Uh, he was uh, the prime minister of Canada in the 1970s. And he innovated quite a lot uh, here in terms of talking about multiculturalism. He said that there cannot be one cultural policy for Canadians of British and French origin. And by the way, he was originally a French origin um, um, person. Uh, and another for the original peoples and yet a third for all others. So this is the idea of this, we've got to come together. We can't live in separate enclaves. For although there are two official languages, there's no official culture, nor does any ethnic group take precedence over any other. No citizen or group of citizens is other than Canadian, and all should be treated fairly. So if you look at that John Barry definition, his research follows in the wake of this definition. So Pierre Trudeau is a statesman, Barry is the researcher that's following in the wake of the uh, statesman. And so in the 1970s, there was a multiculturalism Policy Act, which actually followed in the uh, wake of a bilingual policy. All right. So in 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 Canada, you've got two factors going. Is that you've got a French minority that's geographically somewhat segregated in <coughs> Quebec and very strongly agitating for their rights, which have been a lot of historical injustice in the past. All right. Um, in fact, where Colleen comes from, there are some Cajuns. <laughs> And there were actually French Canadians that were exiled, kicked out, had their property taken away from them during that colonial phase when the um, English beat up the French and ended up the French ended up in New Orleans. You still have that New Orleans accent. Yeah, France didn't want us, Canada didn't either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. After that bilingual framework, so the first thing was to set up a bilingual framework. So French and English are both national languages of music. And it's much stronger. Māori is also a national language of New Zealand. How many of you speak Te Reo? Okay. All right. So, so in, if we did the same experiment in Canada, we'd have a lot more French speakers. Okay. If you go on Air Canada, they speak in French and English. All right. So, following the wake of that bilingualism act, they decided to soften the bilingualism act with a multicultural framework. So it's historically embedded, but then more generalized and universalized. Uh, multiculturalism officially re recognizes Canada's multicultural heritage, recognizes Aboriginal rights, but French and English remain the only official language. So in terms of resources, 
those two are going to be the specialty resources language and symbolic of the nation, whereas other languages will not be. Um, within that, you have equal rights regardless of color, religion, and ethnicity. And um, they're very good at policy to set up uh, things where all Canadians have full participation in society. So here are the outcomes of a policy or act. 13% uh, of MPs in Parliament are foreign-born. So in other words, they set up an office to make sure that the Multicultural Women Act is actually uh, enforced and maintained. New Zealand tends not to do that quite as much, okay, to make sure that policy is actually followed through. Um, and you can see the figures. Uh, they're very solid, all right? Um, New Zealand has certainly made a lot of progress in this area. I mean, I think this current parliament uh, actually has slightly uh, greater uh, Maori representation than the proportion in uh, um, not the general population. Uh, the media reporting on cultural and ethnic diversity is highly inclusive. Um, and you can see that the figures are very good. 76% of immigrants are proud to be Canadian. And 78% feel more strongly attached to Canada than to their country of origin, which is uh, quite a bit stronger than um, for new migrants to New Zealand. So basically saying if you look after people, they are more loyal to you in return. All right, and now we're going to focus on this media um, reporting, because this is probably, as Colleen has signaled to you, one of the mechanisms by which inclusion or exclusion takes place. So how is diversity framed in Canadian print media? This is one of the major mechanisms of <coughs> who we are and who is excluded from there. And as Colleen showed you, Michael Fields definitely was excluding certain people um, from New Zealand. Um, Adrienne's uh, one of the studies in her PhDs is about reasonable accommodation. Uh, this is an act making an adjustment to an established system uh, based on fairness and proven needs. So in other words, if you have some religious need, for instance, you want to wear a burqa, or you want to wear a hijab, or any of these things, if it's judged to be reasonable, then you're allowed to do that. And so you have all these different groups with different rules that find some things offensive and other things necessary. So reasonable accommodation is an attempt to adjudicate between them. Uh, the debate received uh, extensive media attention from 2006 to 8 with many saying that the accommodation of religious and cultural minorities had gone too far. The trigger was a debate between, I think, some conservative religious Jews who objected to, I think, a dance studio near their place that was showing a bit too much skin. Okay, So whose rights get to, to be enforced? So the government deemed a crisis been recent and established a commission to examine this issue. That immediately tells you a lot about the Canadian mentality. They really value these educational, kind of highfalutin commissions, which is a little bit like France, by the way. France has a lot of respect for um, the, the, the academy. The results, basically, um, Adrian did analysis of uh, uh, both French and English language newspapers. How am I doing for time, Colin? You've got about eight more minutes. Um, there were a lot of positive discourses directed towards cultural and religious minorities. And so there was a lot of defense of minorities, which is really surprising in this context, uh, through not an affirmation of their values, but of the values of the nation as a whole, which is liberal democratic values. So this is where New Zealand and Canada are the same. They both have this Anglo heritage that values liberal democracy, John Locke, Adam Smith, um, all these uh, great thinkers of Western civilization, and very inclusive, trying to bring everybody in. There's some mixed discourses, and the directed mainly which was French Canadians. And this whole idea in the English language press, the French don't always play by the rules. It's a very gentle way of bringing the French back into the fold, but I think the uh, Quebecois party has won the recent election in Quebec as well, so this stuff will never go away. Um, and there's a beautiful structure um, you know, I'm a bit of a Hegelian myself. I actually saw, we saw, we witnessed Hegelian discourse in popular media. And we'll go through this in a while. It's almost unbelievable. I couldn't imagine it, um, given the standard of uh, uh, newspapers here. And then there are negative discourses as well. Uh, and they're mainly directed towards small town, older Francophones. So this idea that being prejudiced is quaint. You're not <coughs> hip. You're not with it. They don't come out and call people racist which is very interesting. So it's this intolerance of intolerance, but in a quite a civil way. 
And then here's some of the quotes from an editorial uh, in, about liberal democratic values. Affirming liberal democratic values and defending the minority as a consequence. Very different from the reaction to the Michael Field story that we just heard about from Colleen. How does allowing a Muslim to wear a hijab or a Sikh to wear a turban diminish the rights or beliefs of others? These expressions of faith do not require any compromise by others because they're simply individual life choices. Clearly, they are red herrings in the reasonable accommodation hysteria. Of course, there may be instances when respecting someone's cultural or religious practices necessitates some accommodation, like requesting a prayer space or providing for special dietary needs. However, such requirements are both minimal and reasonable. And these are the typical discourses that occur across the spectrum, liberal and conservative newspapers, French or English. So there is a very much a consensus around liberal values um, in Canada, and this rejection of what Colleen described as kind of more the hysterical, unhelpful types of discourses. It's very inclusive of the in-group. Some opportunists suggest that multiculturalism is a threat to the very essence of Canada and Quebec. These fears are entirely unfounded. Now, by the way, when you do national surveys of Canadians, one of the distinctive features of Canadian society that people always talk about is this multiculturalism. So that's regarded as a, uh, a high value for describing Canadian national identity. Um, aside from stoking ill-founded fears, none of the opportunists has demonstrated how one Canadian's expression of their faith or culture diminishes those of others. Okay? Now, let's see this thesis, antithesis, synthesis structure. Uh, amazingly sophisticated arguments in newspapers. I was really stunned. All right? So here's the thesis. Uh, in his speech, Doucette blasted the Canadian ideology of multiculturalism and said immigrants must integrate. Now, by the way, this is quote unquote integrate, so this is assimilate in Colleen's language. Uh, in Quebec's francophone culture, a view that runs counter to Ottawa's official multiculturalism policy. He added that the other part, federal parties are Canadian and not up to the task of defending Quebec culture. So this is this kind of francophonism. Duceppe's appalling attack on multiculturalism is not the first to come from senior Quebec politicians. Okay, So this is as harsh as it gets within this context. So you're not playing according to the liberal democratic rules. But very soon after, the antithesis come. So in New Zealand, they would just gone after that attack with a full bore blast, scoring as many points as they come and hopefully getting uh, votes out of this or whatever. Here, this follows with an antithesis. Regrettably, and so they talk about this, another person who's in opposition to them. These two political leaders may just be tapping into a deep well of unease among Quebecers. Now I'm saying, okay, that's all right. They're, it's okay to have these fears. Okay? So the antithesis is mobilized, as well as many in Ontario and uh, elsewhere across Canada, who question whether this country has become too tolerant, has welcomed too many immigrants who don't share Canadian values, and are naive to believe that multiculturalism works. So there, they're giving some credence to the first statements, thesis, antithesis, synthesis. At the end of the article, they conclude by saying, clearly, all of Canada continues to struggle through multiculturalism issues and to define what it means to be Canadian, instead of questioning multiculturalism, we should reaffirm the inclusiveness and tolerance has made modern Canada a success. And that includes, to a certain extent, the tolerance of the people who are intolerant, to a certain extent. All right? So you can see that. There's a very interesting, moderate dialogue through those structures. The one group that is actually outed, okay, um, so this is the red, okay, this is, this is not okay, is the small town, small minded mentality. So they don't do a blanket thing against the Francophones. The Anglo French, again, are very much deeply embedded in a historical relationship in Canada, just as Mali and Pakia are. They know how to deal with one another according to the rules. But this is, okay, where they're trying to move the national project along. More than 300 people. Fill, file through a hotel ballroom over the past two days for Quebec's Bouchard-Taylor Commission. So this is this um, high-level intellectuals that were assigned to examine the reasonable accommodation debate. A roving road show that has given an open mic to anyone who wants to muse out loud about religion and minorities. And uh, Saguenay, a slice of the Quebec heartland that is about 95% French and Catholic, offers a porthole 
in why the so-called reasonable accommodation debate has flared into such a hot-button issue in the province. Okay? So essentially, they're blaming, so the, the small town mayor was blamed as being very um, backwards. Okay? He was kind of quaint and a little bit ignorant, but they never called him a racist, okay? which is, I think, quite a good practice in these kind of things. Once you call somebody a racist, that rational debate just shuts off. They don't do it. Okay? But they do have some degree of intolerance of intolerance, and they say opinion leaders who single out a small group of immigrants, and so this was a mayor who did this, so a small group of immigrants in his town, making them the symbolic example of the other, the outgroup member, accusing them of refusing to fit in, condemning their culture, and ostracizing them from the mainstream are nothing but bullies, and there is a strong word, bigots, who contribute to the very radicalization they condemn. All right, so that's actually, the, that's the strongest language that you'll find. So they rule out a lower ranking member of the dominant group. All right, uh, I don't think I'm gonna have time to go through the citizens. Uh, how many minutes do I have left? Two. Okay, so I'm gonna skip through this. This is another illustration of the citizenship guide. Very interesting document, um, um, a story of, of describing Canadian history. Um, um, the interesting thing about this, and I won't have time to go through, is the place of Aboriginal First Nations people is very much muted and smaller in the narrative space compared to that of the French-speaking people. So it's a contract between two people rooted in liberal democracy, because France, France and England and France are the two birthplaces of liberal democracy. And so these two combine to produce a hegemonic discourse around the values of liberal democracy. I'll think I'll just leave, leave it at that. And the negative discourses are um, limited um, to, so this is very much inclusive. Um, yeah. Here's the negative language of what's not allowed within Canadian multiculturalism. This is in the guide. A new citizenship guide for potential immigrants flatly declares that new Canadians cannot engage in barbaric practices such as genital mutilation or honor killing. So they've come straight out and said, these are things not within our liberal project. If you want to be Canadian, don't do this stuff. So this is exactly the kind of response to the kind of fear-mongering journalism that Colleen talked about earlier. This is um, saying that doesn't fit. It's not anything goes within multiculturalism. All right, so I'll kind of skip over towards the end. Um, discourses in Canadian media are very positive towards cultural and religious Minorities, and the way this is done is by rooting it in liberal democratic values, inclusive of everyone's rights. All right, and there's a huge valuing of reason. So I really detect this is very much 19th century French discourses, Voltaire, people like that. They really value these high-level academics like that Bouchard Commission. They they treat them as authorities. And everybody in New Zealand knows we academics are not authorities in New Zealand in any way, shape, or form. All right? This is very much a valuing equality, freedom, democracy, and trying to produce a consensus. Problem for this type of discourse is that Aboriginal or First Nation people are just about invisible in this. All right? So there are forms of discrimination going on. I have Maori colleagues all the time going to Canada, linking up with First Nations people, showing them how to mobilize and actually get a fair share of their resources because they don't. Okay? The French get the French get the Aboriginal stuff. So every country has a different arc of historical development that allows it to legitimize and manage certain things and not so well other things. All right? So certainly there are mutual learnings possible from Canada and New Zealand, but to do them might not be easy. You see what I'm saying? They're rooted in the history. Um, and the hot button issues reveal, I guess, the limits to inclusion. Okay. Thanks very much for your attention. Thank you.